According to the National Crime Information Center, NCIC, 521705 people were reported missing in 2021 for the whole world, of whom 93,718 were still missing at the beginning of 2022. It is important to stress that the number of reports recorded is not the same as the actual number of missing persons. According to the FBI, there were 359,094 NCIC entries of missing children in 2022. Yet there are few cases that for some reason get more attention than others. Here is a case like that. The story of an American girl whose life changed forever in early 1999, as did her family's. Mikkel Diane Biggs' Mysterious Disappearance Mikkel Diane Biggs was born on May 31, 1987, the first child of Darian and Tracy Biggs. Later, her sisters Kimber and Linnell and her brother Nathan were born. Mikkel was a quiet child and a gifted, excellent student. She loved art, so as well as playing the piano and clarinet, she also loved drawing. Her dream was to become a Disney animator one day. Apart from being an obedient girl, she was not far from being a real naughty child, so to speak. On the morning of their last Christmas, for example, she persuaded her sister Kimber to sneak downstairs before their parents woke up and see what Santa had brought them. Little did Kimber know that a few days later, this innocent childish prank would be one of the last memories she had of her sister, because a few days later, the family's life would change forever and drastically. On the evening of January 2, 1999, Mikkel, then 11 years old, and her sister Kimber heard the familiar music of an ice cream truck, which at the time was just a few houses away, shortly before 6 p.m. The girls took some money and walked four houses down to wait for it. Kimber took their dog with her to go for a walk, and Mikkel rode Kimber's new bicycle, which she had received for her birthday. But the ice cream van refused to arrive and Kimber was getting cold. She walked back to their house while Mikkel continued to wait for the ice cream truck. When Kimber got home, her mother sent her back and told her to tell Michael it was time to come home because they were about to have dinner. When she returned to the place where they had just been waiting together, she couldn't see her sister anywhere on her surprise. But her new bike was lying on the road with one wheel still spinning. Police later estimated the time Mikkel spent alone about 90 seconds. That was all the time it took for the little girl to disappear. At first, Kimber was angry that Mikkel had just left her new bike on the road, but she was also surprised because this negligence was nothing like her. After a few minutes of searching and calling Mikkel, she sensed something was seriously wrong, so she went home and told her mother what had happened. At first, Mother Tracy Biggs thought her daughter might have moved next door. Until she found out that it wasn't the case, Kimber and one of her siblings continued to search for Mikkel. Eventually, no trace of the girl was found at all, so Tracy Biggs contacted the police. When the police arrived on the scene, Kimber had already put her bike away, However, they were still able to determine that it appeared as if Mikkel was running from someone or someones. At the spot where the girls had been waiting earlier, two quarters were found on the ground, presumably the ones they wanted to pay for the ice cream with. It seemed that Mikkel must have been really scared about something to just throw the money away and leave it there. Police deployed also sniffer dogs, but the animals lost her scent after a few meters leading investigators to conclude that the girl had been put in a vehicle and driven off with it. The case was hampered by the fact that they had very little physical evidence and no witnesses to the event. They checked all the ice cream vendors in the area, but not only did they come up with nothing, they could not even confirm whether there were any ice cream trucks in the area at the time. The disappearance of the little girl caused a stir in the city, resulting in hundreds, if not thousands, of tips in the first few days that turned out to be absolute false leads. One was an email Mikkel's father received from someone who wrote that Mikkel was being held for ransom. The police traced the sender and it turned out to be a practical joke. One of the possible perpetrators, much talked about in the case, is a man named D. Blalock. Blaylock was a neighbor of the Biggs and a registered sex offender with a criminal record. After Mikkel disappeared, the man was of course interviewed 
and he told the police that he was at home watching TV when she was last seen. The alibi was confirmed by his wife. Then, about nine months after Mikkel disappeared, Blaylock assaulted another neighbor, a woman named Susan Quinnett. He broke into her house, sexually assaulted her and strangled her until she passed out. He then left the scene, leaving the woman there, believing she was dead. Susan was extremely lucky to survive the attack and told the police at the hospital that she was sure Mikkel was buried in Blaylock's house. The police then focused more on the man in connection with Mikkel's disappearance, so after obtaining a search warrant, they searched his house but found nothing of use. It later emerged that Blaylock also had a caravan which he kept in his yard, but by the time the police received the warrant, it already disappeared, so they only searched the house. Blaylock was eventually sentenced to 187 years in prison for the assault and attempted murder of Susan Quinette. Later, Mikkel's parents visited him in prison, but Blaylock denied any involvement in the girl's disappearance. The girl's parents did not believe him, and to this day they believe he was lying and that he was involved. However, the man made an ambiguous comment because he said, I am not responsible for what another personality did. He didn't say person, he said personality. To this day, the police still believe that the man was involved in the little girl's disappearance, but they have never had enough evidence. Blaylock is rumored to have confessed in prison that he was involved in the abduction of the girl, but has always publicly denied it. As the years went by, Mikkel's parents began to give up hope and began to doubt that their daughter would ever make it back alive. All Kimber and the family could only think about was what kind of hell Mikkel was living through. About five years after Mikkel disappeared, the family finally held her funeral. It gave them a sense of closure and a place to grieve. But let's stop here for a moment. According to the engraving on the gravestone, Mikkel was born in 1989. It says she was nine years old when she was abducted. Other sources available on the case state that she was 11 years old, as does this January 16, 1999 newspaper article that appeared in the Arizona Republic two weeks after the girl's disappearance. According to many official sources, such as the website of the California State Department of Justice, she was born in 1987. The reason for this contradiction is incomprehensible, but I thought it was part of the truth. Almost 20 years later, on March 14, 2018, police in Wisconsin received a report of a $1 bill with a strange message. The text was written on the edge of the bill and read, My name is Mikkel Biggs, kidnapped from Mesa, Arizona. I'm alive. The police have looked into this clue, but most people do not believe it is real. Not only Mikkel's name is misspelled on the banknote, but the writing style looked like a child's handwriting. But at the time, Mikkel must have been 30 years old, if she was alive at all. Of course, it was thought that the writing had been there for much longer, but it was quickly discovered that the banknote was printed in 2009, when Mikkel would have been 20 or 22, depending on which year of birth you use. But some disagree, because they believe that the handwriting is not like the writing of a child. Others speculated that Mikkel had misspelled her name deliberately, either to save space or so that if she was caught, she could tell her captor that she had not actually written the note. Yet it seems that most people thought the writing was a hoax, so this clue eventually went cold. Those who first heard about the girl's disappearance initially assumed the ice cream truck driver was responsible. Others speculated that Mikkel's abductor might have been imitating the music of the ice cream van to lure the children, and some believe that Dee Blaylock was indeed involved. But everyone agrees that the girl was kidnapped and didn't escape on her own, but no one knows who did it or where she is now, whether it's her body or the girl who may still be alive. Mikkel's disappearance sparked an investigation that was, at least at the time, the largest in Arizona related to missing persons. They searched 35 abandoned mine shafts, interviewed hundreds of people, and reportedly interviewed every ice cream vendor in the state. Despite the limited evidence found at the scene, more than 800 pieces of evidence were eventually collected, including Kimber's bicycle. This was subjected to fingerprint and DNA analysis and is still being preserved as evidence in case any new technology or methods emerge in the future that might help. Mikkel's parents later moved to Utah, but in 2019, Kimber was still living in Mesa. 
She and the police believe that if Mikkel is dead, her remains are probably in the area. Until the make of this video, there were no specific suspects or arrests in connection with the girl's disappearance. The police hope that whoever abducted the girl will one day be unable to cope with their conscience and come forward. If Mikkel is still alive, she is 34 or 36 years old when the video is released. Subscribe to my channel, watch my previous videos, and like the video if you liked it. Thanks for your attention. See you next time. Bye.